it's time for the Dr. Tanji Show. Hey, you're on the air with Dr. Tanji. Talk to me. As soon as I hear your voice, Dr. Tanji, my day is better. Hey, Dr. Tanji, I took your advice and made some changes in my life. And you know what? I've been winning ever since. Thank you for your advice. Now, here's Dr. Tanji. Welcome, welcome, welcome <laughs> to the show. <laughs> that is built on Kingdom Principles, a show that motivates, teaches, and inspires, a show that helps you go from where you are right now to where you want to be. I appreciate your joining with me today. I'm your host, Dr. Tanji. And of course, we have our girl in the studio, Miss Jeannie. Kitten hey, Kitten. meow. What's up, Dr. Tanji? <laughs> Man, I'm enjoying this day. No matter what, it is an amazing day today. I got up. You got up. You got up. And you're ready. You're ready for this day, right? Of course you are. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. As soon as, you, as soon as you wake up, it's like, I'm here. Thank you. <laughs> absolutely. You know, we've got a lot to discuss today, right? But I want to discuss a principle that I think everyone at some point in their lives have said, okay, I'm living abundantly. What does that mean? And then living abundantly. I I cannot wait (laughs) for that principle and everything that comes with it. Because in just a few minutes, you can't move. Coming to the Dr. Tanji Lounge uh, (laughs) is a gentleman, I mean, how do you go from being homeless two years later, a millionaire, and then Forbes magazine calls you a marketing genius? Forbes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, that's, that's that abundant life. <laughs> But from homeless to that. So that's coming up. Can't move. Stay interactive. Dr. Tanji, lay out those principles and details about the abundant life we all desire. And actually, we're born to have. Thank you for saying that. Did you hear that? We're born to have it. And she's absolutely correct. When we think about living abundantly, you know that people say, hey, I'm living living my life on You'll have a T-shirt about it, or you'll go to church and you'll hear people talk about no, Beyonce yeah, talk about yeah, their love on top. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Yeah, but I I started asking that proverbial question, Dad. I call him Daddy. Daddy, what does living abundantly mean? So I wrote down some things, and for you who's listening. I want you to follow along with me, please. Faith. We talked about faith last week. We we talked about faith the week before. And we're just going to talk a little bit about it today because it encompasses, it goes with living abundantly. All right. Faith, as we know it, is belief. You cannot believe, you cannot operate in faith if you don't even know what you're operating in. You got to believe in something, right? So why not believe in yourself? Why not believe that your creator, if you've got a personal relationship with him, why not believe that he's given you absolutely everything that you need? Everything. And When you operate from the mindset of, okay, you mean to tell me I have everything I need? Yeah. Okay, well, this is due, that's due, this is due, but you're still telling me I have everything I need. Yes. How can you be so sure? Glad you ask. Any great master planner will sit down before having a product and will count the cost. They'll count, what am I good at? They'll ask that question. What can I do? How do I know that it can be done? Is there anyone that's doing it? And if after all of those questions, you still find yourself saying, you know what? I know I can do it. 
I may not have all of the resources to do it, but I believe. When you believe, when you're operating in faith, you have, you got to hear me when I say this, you have everything that you need. Now, you have to quiet the noise. I said that a couple of times ago. Once you quiet the noise, the noise is, you know, those naysayers, those people that say, man, you, boy, you really do dream well, those folk. And then you're going to sit and you're going to get your pen and paper and you're going to sketch out what do you want your life to look like, no matter where you are, even if you find yourself in a situation or circumstances that, yeah, may be beyond your control. But remember, we're going into this thing with belief. We're going into this thing with faith. And there are times when, I think I said this to you before, there are times that you're going to tie a knot in faith and you're going to hold on for dear life. But here's the yin to that yang. You got to do work. Now, she ain't talking about abundant living. Yes, I am. Remember, this show has principles that we live, though that living is from the inside out, not from what we see, those temporal things. When you're living and operating in faith, now you're doing about to do the work. I want you to remember, work is not your nine to five. That's your job. Work is what you were born to do. Work is your original, what is the original intent of the master creator? What was his intent? What can you do that keeps you up at night, that makes you dream, that even at times people will say, you know, this chick has lost her mind. Man, they don't do that right there. But they do. And you're right, you do have to lose your mind. But the mind that I'm talking about is the mind that says, I can, I will, I deserve it. I can, I will, and I deserve it. Now, I'm not saying a big house or a fancy car, or lots of money in the bank. All oh, those are nice. That comes with the territory. But for all intents and purposes, it's about you becoming. It's about you believing. I can, I will, and I deserve it. And you do. And you can. And you will. <laughs> Faith. We can't do anything without it. Because this new mindset now, remember, that's your currency, just like the dollar is the currency in the marketplace. For those who really believe that I know that there is an original intent for my life, intent for my life, then we got to have faith, guys. We must. We, 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 we must wear it like a coat in, in, in the wintertime. And, 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 and we got to just talk with faith, believing that you can. You have to. There is no other, there's no other substitute. Now, the abundant living is being and doing what you were purposed to be and do. Remember, when you put that work, you become the work and you start doing what you become, then Everything else is going to follow. It has to. There are laws to this thing. Remember I said um, during our first show, if you get up on a 10-story building and you jump down, your intent is to land safely, right? You can have all the faith. I know I can. I believe I can. I deserve to land <laughs> safely. But if you jump down off that building without the necessary things to kind of break the fall or having someone down there with, with, a, with, with pillows or whatever, you're going to hurt yourself if you survive it at all. So we're not talking 
things that are unwise. We're talking things that will truly allow you to live a life that blows your mind, blows your children's mind, blows the people that are around you, their minds, and seals your name in history. Because after all, I mean, you do want to kind of make the world a better place, right? That is what we're here for. Absolutely. Right? So with that said, I challenge, I challenge you today. I challenge you to get up. I challenge you to write a plan. Many are the plans of a man's heart. But we already know whose purpose will survive. Purpose. Plan. It can be done, and it will. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Well, let me tell you something. (laughs) You just laid it out, Dr. Tanji, in reference to an abundant life, uh, what you have to put in the work. Uh, But most importantly, I love when you reiterate the fact that there has to be a plan, a vision. And on the Dr. Tanji hotline is (laughs) an amazing, an amazing uh, innovator. Um, We said uh, Forbes called him a marketing genius. And, you know, most importantly, you know, we're living in some of the most challenging times. And this man can relate because there was a point in his life he was homeless. Flash Fast forward, uh, you know, a couple years later, he Mm -hmm. is negotiating a concept, a a business he created uh, for millions. And so you're like, how you do that there? (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) And so uh, absolutely. uh, Everett Taylor, welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you. Thank you so much for having having me. Absolutely. So, Dr. Tanji, like I said, I mean, this uh, man has become the go-to in terms of marketing upstarts. And uh, if you stream or watch any of his content, it's amazing to watch Everett move around to just excite thought into reality. That That's what happens yeah. when I watch yeah. Everett. So can you please elaborate on where you were and the evolution of where you are now? And how you got there? Absolutely. Uh, um, how much time do you have? <laughs> it's a, it's I know a, you don't have that much time. So. <laughs> yeah, look, look, get it in, get it in. Pretty crazy story. Um, and uh, I, I really appreciate you guys for having me. It's always super humbling, um, you. you know, to be able to do things like this and, and be able to share my story. Uh, you know, I, I was born and raised in Southside, Richmond, Virginia. Um, I grew up in the hood, didn't grow up with a lot, very cliche, you know, single mother, government housing, all that good stuff or all that bad stuff, however you look at it. Um, but it was pretty normal for me. You know, the first entrepreneurs, quote unquote, that I saw were, were drug dealers. Um, you know, I saw people killed right in front of me, um, growing up, I seen, you know, drugs, I seen prostitution, I've seen just a lot of things that probably someone my age should not see or be presented um but it just made me suffer um i ended up getting involved with the wrong people um when i was 11 years old i started selling drugs um i did that for a few years until one fateful day when my mother (laughs) saw some stuff in my room that shouldn't have been in there she forced me to get a job and she went to the classified ads and i'm sure some of y'all younger users uh, uh listeners probably don't even know mm-hmm. what classified ads are um it's like <laughs> craigslist mm-hmm. in the physical um but uh you know she forced me to to go to that job interview and i found my calling which was marketing it was a, a job for a junior marketing assistant role and uh it was amazing they asked me if i could start the next like the next mm-hmm. week on monday and i said i can't because i have school so i would literally go in before school and after school and work weekends to get the same amount of work done that someone would, with a full-time nine to five job would have. And so um, just really learn marketing, sharpen my skills. Um, and then unfortunately I got laid off from that role. And at the same time, my mother um, was also jobless and we ended up homeless. My mom and my sister stayed in a woman's shelter, whereas I was, um, on the streets. So I lived on the streets 
for a year. Um, in Virginia, where it actually gets cold, mm. and you know, it's one of the most life changing experiences in my life. But luckily for me, um, there was a local library nearby where I used to seek shelter and um, have internet get inter- internet access. And um, I discovered tech. I discovered Mark Zuckerberg. I discovered uh, a whole new hustle that I didn't even know existed. Um, a lot of young black and boys boys and girls still don't know exist. And so I decided, hey, I'm going to save up my money. I'm going to play drum street, do whatever I can to apply to college. And I applied to Virginia Tech because it had tech in the name um, as a computer engineer. And that's where I really started to hone my skills from a technical perspective as well as marketing. Um, Unfortunately, I had to drop out of college after that first year. Um, And my frustrations grew from not getting opportunities. So I started my first company, which I was able to successfully sell two years later. And since then, I've started six other companies. Um, Four out of these companies have been multi-million dollar companies. Um, So I've had a pretty good success rate. Um, I've been a marketing executive for several multi-million dollar companies, leading two of them to um, multi-million dollar acquisitions. And I, you know, I have the opportunity to speak over the world and be on uh, you know, shows like this, and I'm currently CEO of ET Enterprises, a conglomerate of companies that I 100% own. Um, and you know, ownership is a really big yes. key to me because I'll be able to live life the way that I want to live. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, that's kind of where I am now. Wow. That's yeah, not just want a rollerblade. Wow. That's. What you- <laughs> I'm like, I'm amped. I'm like, I want to go I take a boxing right. course and then rollerblade. I'm like, look, I want an every tail of what you want. That's the kind of high I want. Oh my. Yeah. Wow. Enough said, enough said. So would you say that the key is one thing, like I said, to study and, and obviously, you know, marketing found you, you found each other. That was the relationship that sparked your greatness. What you were, I'm glad you said passionate about mm-hmm. because I try to mm-hmm. teach young people that now know, you know, you don't work me. What what drives you crazy? What turns you on if nothing else is happening or nothing else is coming in? And that was your baby. Did you also, what other components for so many people listening, trying to find that thing that it, um, that made the company successful? Was it, uh, you know, providing something that you know, people need always immediately. What is that thing that you do that makes it work and and build success though? I think number one is that I'm passionate about everything that I'm doing. I see a lot of people that just see dollar signs Mm -hmm. in, 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 in the way they're trying to make money. And so they don't really engross themselves really within that community, which is their users or their customers. Right. And for me, these are things that I all genuinely care about. And I I was doing a talk yesterday, and I said, before any company I've ever started, whether consciously or subconsciously, I've always immersed myself within the target audience of that particular product or company or service, right? Mm-hmm. And target audience being, you know, the audience most likely to use this product, right? Mm-hmm. Or this company, right? Mm-hmm. And so for instance, um, the newest company I'm about to launch is in the art space and I've fully immersed myself within the art community. I'm an art collector. I've become, you know, a more historian within the art space, um, a connoisseur within the art space. I've built relationships. And so when you build relationships and you really are passionate about what you're doing, you then start to identify needs, right? Mm-hmm. You start to identify things that are missing, things that can be better, right? And so I tell a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, what are you passionate about? What do you love? And what about those things that you love or those things that you're interested in? What could be improved about those things? What could be better? What is missing, right? And then that's how you can kind of start building into something special. You know, Everett, uh, I'm, oh, I'm sitting here. Hallelujah. And I'm about to hallelujah jump out this window here. I, uh, first and foremost, <laughs> thank you so, so very much for giving us something that you're not the creator of, which is your time. So thank you. Thank you for that. Jeannie and I thank just you. had that conversation, Everett. I kid you not. Hot not buttons. even. I was like, Everett, 15 please let him minutes know. ago. And uh, yeah, of course, everything this woman says is true to form. So <laughs> thank you <laughs> for <laughs> elaborating on that. I want to ask you, uh, Everett, when 
where, how, when did you go or when did you know that you can move from imagination to something that's real, to something that's tangible? Right. I think everything has been completely different for me. Okay. Um, every company, every project has been extremely different. Like me starting my first company, mm-hmm. being, you know, one year removed from being homeless, right. from being probably having like thirteen, fourteen dollars to my name, so living in the hood, like that was a completely different space than this ne- this you know next company that I'm launching. Where hey, like not even a brag, I'm in a really great financial space. I can you know Absolutely. I can kind of build what I want to build, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and for my first company, I literally came back home. I um, was applying to all these different jobs using LinkedIn, and no one would give me an opportunity, right? Mm-hmm. And so I was like, what's, what's going on? I have a pretty good resume. I created a fake LinkedIn with mm-hmm. a white guy with the same resume, changed the name, sent it out to 10 companies. Seven of those companies responded back that wouldn't respond back to me, Wow. right? right. And so for me, it was like, wow, I needed a kick in the butt to actually start and do something for myself. Really coming out as a freshman out of college, what else do I know how to do? Part. I just knew right, I knew how to right, I knew right. how to have a good time. I knew how to party. And I realized, like I said, you know, I like to have a good time, I like to party, but then you identify issues within that arena and I realized if you were in my city, if you were under eighteen, you had the high school stuff to go to. If you were over twenty one, you could go to the club and the bar. But if you were between eighteen and twenty, you didn't really have anywhere to go. Mm-hmm. But besides unsafe, you know, house parties that got shot up. Right. And we know, you know, that those are the worst, right? Mm-hmm. And so for me, I just my you know, my wheels just started turning. And, you know, I think there is no secret answer from taking idea to implementation it's about yo are you able to be the one percent nine everybody has ideas right mm-hmm. everybody has ideas it's, it's, it's like opinions everyone has them right mm-hmm. everyone has ideas how many people are actually able to take an idea and say i'm going to do something about it there were people that thought of Facebook and Uber and all these companies before, but it took people who actually said, I'm going to do something about it. My first company, I said, you know what? I'm going to do something about it. I spent the last of my money to print out flyers. I went and called all my friends. I called, you know, got connected with as many people as I could, had my little sister passing out flyers. I did everything that I could to make that first event successful with my first company. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think it just takes a certain fire within you to say, hey, I'm not just going to have cool or great ideas. I'm actually going to do something about it. People lead a lives of of mediocrity a lot of times, not because they don't they're not talented, not because, you know, they don't have great ideas, but because they just don't do. Wow. Wow. I know that. And. I I thank you. Thank you so, so very much for doing. Seriously, thank you. Um, Thank you. Yeah, people, you know, people are watching. They are. They may never come up and say anything, but they are. And I appreciate, I applaud you for that. And then also, Everett, you mentioned, uh, which is another key component, uh, you know, getting your friends. Uh, How have you been able to establish assess and develop who your team players are while you're in development and as you have continued to succeed? What has that process been like? Yeah, so that too is always different. Um, you know, you you have to understand where, where your point of leverage is, right? Mm. Um, a lot of us that are starting companies, we don't have a lot of money, right? Mm-hmm. We don't have a lot of resources, especially people who are black and brown or come from underserved communities, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of hustle and finesse your way as much as you can. The guys in my first company when I started throwing those events, the two guys that helped me build the technology because it became an event technology platform, 
they lived in my dorm my freshman year at college, mm-hmm. right? Wow. You know, these guys helped me and did it for very, very little money. And, you know, a lot of times you, you're going to have to find people who believe in your vision or just support you that are going to help you. Absolutely. Um, you know, and like I said, these, these, the answers to these questions aren't rocket science. You just have to pull yourself and figure it out. You know, for me, I knew I couldn't afford to pay some top developers to build my platform. So I got a couple college sophomores who, yes, the, <laughs> the platform was pretty janky at first, right? But I did what I had to do um, to get that going. Mm-hmm. And as you are more successful and as you, you know, make more money, you can then start to improve those products and you can start to hire better talent. And then once you start to find great talent, you do all that you can to retain that talent. Hmm. I believe in overpaying people. I believe in making sure that they are, this is the best job of their lives because I understand that finding great talent isn't easy. And so me cultivating talent, making sure that they're comfortable, making sure that they are able to be the best version of themselves is very, very important. And where I find that talent, I found developer. I found a developer who used to be at my local local grocery store that I helped put him in a coding boot camp, and now he's one of my develop. He's been a developer for me for like the past four years. So there, you know? therein lies the uh, ever tailored ministry. <laughs> that's exa- no, but that's beautiful. It is, and that's Absolutely. what it's about. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Wow, Great. Everett, Great. you are truly doing it, and um, I, I, I can't sing your praises enough i will ask you about this particular app i hope i'm not jumping the gun here haver h-a-y-v-e-r i love it yes yes Yes. (laughs) in this culture especially out here in hollywood in los angeles period and just wherever you may find yourself why that particular app app for addictions yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so that that particular that particular company, um, you know, wasn't actually my initial idea. Um, a couple guys came to me. Um, both, you know, one of them dealt with addiction. The other one was the father of a really good friend of mine, um, and told me about the idea, and I loved it because the men in my family were ravished by the drug you know you know i was born in 89 you know the 80s was very terrible in the crack cocaine era right Right. in richmond virginia and so you know my uncles the men in my family were drug addicts or in jail for selling drugs or dead from drugs and so there's been something that's been very near and dear to my heart for a very long time and i know that when people leave these rehabilitation centers right and these rehab centers that they struggle, right? It's right. easy to stay sober when you're forced to, right? right? Mm-hmm. But that outpatient care, when you leave, how are you able to maintain that? And that's what we're really trying to tackle with Haver. Mm. That's wonderful. And again, what I yeah. notice consistently through uh, the Everett Taylor movement is the uh, being able to identify that need and like right. I said, how can I change it? But it's it's stuff that people need. Absolutely, it's it's one on one and being great at it. And another thing you do, ever look, I'm I'm <laughs> studying you very very intimately. Um, come up with the best, and I'm a big sucker for um branding and names, you know, and just things that make people feel good. But the names you come up with for your companies or products is, is, is very catchy and it, and it sounds and looks good too. Mm -hmm. Is, Mm -hmm. is that deliberately part of your, your marketing, uh, you know, success? Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely part of it. Like if you look, um, look at, at names, um, like pop social, right? Mm -hmm. Um, That is a social media software tool that actually helps people grow their audience on Instagram, right? So people struggle with the algorithm, people struggle with getting followers, getting customers, getting listeners, whatever it may be, they struggle with it. And so we wanted to provide a affordable way to do that. And pop social makes sense because we make 
<laughs> your social media pop, right? So it's, <laughs> simple as that. It's it's simple. And if you're not popping, you're not <laughs> happening. So there you go. You're not wow. happening. So pop social, you know, it just it just makes sense. Makes and sense. you got to think about names where if you tell somebody pop social, mm-hmm. like you can't get that wrong, no. right? It's like pop social, <laughs> you know. Um, the second company that I created, uh, Growth Hackers, very easy growth hackers Mm -hmm. right art x which is the company that's launching in a few weeks art x very very simple haver i did not name Mm -hmm. um and then millicent um is actually named after my mother um and companies come to my digital marketing firm to make sense out of marketing to millennials millicent right (sighs) so everything is kind of (laughs) yeah everything was is is kind of tied and you know named in a certain way even my nonprofit, uh, which we're launching the website it's been around for a while but uh we're officially launching like an actual website um soon but south side fun i'm from south side richmond it just makes sense you know so mm-hmm. everything the branding the names the logos everything is is all tied in and is very meticulous and very very well so uh again Everett Taylor, uh, thank you so much for mm-hmm. interacting with the Dr. Tanji show. Uh, we have talked and it's so much I know that um, will be happening and, and everything is we're discussing. And I do, I have to, uh, again, commend you. And even on the Art X, I have a, a 10 year old that is uh, into animation. Mm-hmm. And so I've, 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 you know, of course, been forced to interact with. Uh, more with from graphics to uh, filmmaking to animation and just looking at um, whether you're going to an art gallery or the software or how they interact. I I have to tell you, you are more than anything, you're on point. And it's like you said, it's nothing new, but what is needed and how you create a platform for that. And even I noticed walking by art gallery on Ventura Boulevard the other day, I was like, Artists really don't have, they're, they're out here all over the place, but they're, if, if it's not a convention, which, you know, if you're in that hub or that industry, you know, but your average artist who just has their tablet mm-hmm. or just not knowing where or what to go to, they're kind of lost. And you're, you're, again, you're filling a void with ArtX. So congrats. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. That means a lot. <laughs> I get it. I get it. So uh, continue greatness. And if yes. anybody needs to interact with you and just uh, follow what's next in the breaking world of Everett Taylor, how do they do that? Um, they can just follow me on uh, any social media platforms. It's just my name, uh, Everett, E-V-E-R-E-T-T-E. You can find me anywhere. Go to EverettTaylor.com. Um, I'm pretty accessible. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> reach out. And uh, Dr. Tanji has an incredible uh, following of several major markets, including um, Everett, outside of the woods, the whole DMV area, uh, ATL, you know, L.A. and and other places. But we're really strong there. There are so many uh, budding entrepreneurs and uh, idea thinkers just sitting, listening. What you, you, you've given a lot, but what is something that you could leave with them to uh, just uh, embrace on a daily basis to push through? And especially when that challenge, uh, that hater, that doubter comes uh, trying to pull that team together when somebody in the dorms not believing or the family is throwing hate darts. What do you have to say to him or her? You know, on my wrist, I I have this, this piece of jewelry and it says relentless. It is the word that I live by um, because I understand that the reason that I'm successful today is because of my relentless mentality. Mm-hmm. I don't take nothing from anyone. I believe in myself 100%. If I fail, I'm going to come back two times harder. And just having that mentality in life to understand the bigger picture, to understand that Your mistakes and failures are blips on the radar to the longer and bigger picture of your success. I think sometimes we get so caught up in the moment 
and not being able to see the bigger picture. A lot of those people that don't believe in you, they're not going to be there in the next few years. A lot of those people that doubt you or have bad things to say about you, once you succeed, they're all going to come clamoring back. Trust me. I've seen it. I've been on the end where no one believed me and people left me for dead. I was homeless. The same kids that, you know, I was a popular kid in school when I came to school, you know, smelly and dirty and, like, not being able to take showers and not having cool clothes abandoned me. So now those, those people are asking me for jobs today. So you just have to understand that this is a marathon, not a sprint. I know that sounds cliche, but it's so important to know. And uh, you really just have to believe in yourself and you can't give up. The reason that most people do not succeed is because they stop or they just stop trying or they, you know, they give up or they listen to the haters or they listen to the doubters or they listen to even things within themselves that, you know, doubt. So just be relentless, know your worth, know your abilities, know your talent, and know that you're meant for something bigger, always. Wow. Ever tell. <laughs> Look, I mean, hey, if somebody ever wow. says anything about Ever, I promise you I'm going to punch him in the face. I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling oh you, Ever. They'd be God. like, the shit, invest them, like, just mentally. Yeah. That that was yeah. it. And then you, he, yeah. you know, Ever has that track and field. Me as a track and field runner. Yeah. That is that mindset. Absolutely. Oh, my God. Well, you are the perfect prototype <laughs> for the Dr. Tanya show. And appreciate yes, you, Ever. You Talk are. to you soon. And, uh, it was all for a reason, and I, that was completely confirmed these few minutes. Absolutely. So thank you so much, thank and you, continue Everett. success. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you so you. much. Thank you so much, guys. Wow. Thank Talk you. to you soon. <laughs> Later. <laughs> Bye, Everett. Okay. See ya. Wow. What more can you say? We have no excuses. So since we operate in honesty, openness, and sincerity... I owe you an apology. Uh (laughs) No, 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 no. I do. I owe myself an apology. Absolutely. I owe my daughter an apology. Absolutely. I owe my son, Harvey Quids, an apology. (laughs) I do. Because God has truly, truly blessed me beyond. I am living a life of abundance. Abundance and doing what you're supposed to be doing. How dare I take that for granted? How dare me? So I hope that you guys were listening. <laughs> Please forgive me. I would like Dr. To Taji is, 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 is being engaged by the Dr. <laughs> Taji show. That's when you're doing the darn That's thing. Okay. Wow. What an amazing platform. What an amazing platform. Wow. What can you say other than let's they, get busy? That, no. Let's get busy. Get get it done. Let's it done. go. Let's go. That's let's it. go. Let's go. Let's go. And it's so on point with living an abundant life. But it's still when you strip it all down. Right. You know, it's it's like you said, it's the consistency. It's yeah. it's knowing yeah. it's not stopping. Not stopping. Um, and, and you have everything that you're supposed to have. You you just said it at the open of the show. Yes, ma'am. That's exactly <laughs> what you said. Wow. Even when he faced homelessness for a year, a year and a half, he didn't stop. If he needed to stop, that would have been the ideal time. But not only stopping, <laughs> but smelly and stinky. Come on. Come on. Wow. We're living in a world where we worry about exactly how we look. We're, you know, Instagram ready, smelly and stinky and push through. Right. Wow. Doesn't get any better than that, right? It just doesn't. <laughs> it, it is. And being relentless. Being relentless. I am going to use that word now as a crutch. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's a bunch of crutches. Use that crutch. Stay on those crutches. Yes. Yes. Wow. And so, and, and just, like you say, I think um, knowing um, what is needed, I think it's amazing how people yeah. interact with you at Dr. Tanji's show. Um, yeah. I always tell you, I mean, it, it's, it's, and it's the little things. Come on. It's, it's not yeah. the, the pyro, the yeah, big yeah, duction, yeah. the yeah, yeah, this, yeah. the, that. I mean, I consistently see your followers, your new followers who interact with you and decide to come to you and stay with you. It's, it's the little things. It's the little things. And you know, I am so grateful. I truly, truly am. 
every time I get an alert or something that comes across and I'll text Jeannie and say, did you see that? <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. I, I mean that from my heart. Thank you so, so very much for taking a chance with me again on something that you don't even create. And even <laughs> when you have been at those stages in life, uh, oh. you know, whenever talked about the the times of you know not knowing or trying to figure it out what things did you do to continue to be abundant you talked about being you know a mom not knowing where something was coming from you trying to knowing that you needed to uh study more and then when you're faced with the closest people to you challenging you and attempting to block what steps did you take to get over and to abundance? You know, Jeannie, I, I I went from, and I, I don't want to be insensitive here, so she asked, I've got to be transparent. I went from, okay, I'm 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 calling on this this God that my grandmother and my mom and my aunt Flora they talked about and and and, and they said he works but where he at <laughs> and I'm being honest where where is he when when my 6 year old is 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 right here and she needs this and my 4 year old is right here and he needs that and then there's that 2 year old that's saying but mommy I said, dear God, <laughs> if you are real, like my grandmama said and my, my mama said and my aunt said, would you let me have a relationship with you? Can, can, I, can, I, can I really be what you said in that book right there? that I was more than an overcomer, that I would be on top and not on bottom, and that I could live a life. And I believed it. And no matter what, who cares if you've been served 18 times? <laughs> and I, when I say serve, the legal world know what I mean, right? Who cares if you've lost everything that you thought that made you who you were? Who, 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 who cares when you've got three people that are looking at you saying, but you said, Ma, but Mommy, you said, you said that he was a what provider or whatever it is that you need him to be in that moment in your life. But what good is it to get accepted into the fold, get accepted as royalty and not live it? And that, my friend, was the making of a hypocrite. And yours truly. You couldn't beat me praying. Couldn't beat me fasting. But doing. Mm -hmm. Being. And there were times when I even struggled with, do I even deserve this? You know, let me help her get it. Or let me help him get it. Right. When we get in our own Come way. Come on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, now... I apologize if I offend anybody over the years, but today, let's, let's do this thing. Let's just see how uberly successful, and you do know success is being and doing what you were born to do. The money will come, the houses will come, the prestige, all of that, the accolades. But wouldn't it be a, an awful shame to amass a billion dollars. And you, 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 you even get a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. You know you made it, right? Mm -hmm. And you got all them folk that held your ladder and, and, and did this and fed the kids and helped you. And only to get to the end of your life. And he says, you did everything that you wanted to do. Yeah, you were uberly successful in that and yeah you fed homeless and yeah you fed this and you built houses and you dug wells but I assigned you to that because therein lies all of your abundance oops 
And there lies the key because you can have all of those things. I mean, you can say all of that, but I mean, I find us in um, such a heavy, heavy load. And I feel like the Mm. world we've been socked with a black eye. So Mm. you can have those things. But why is the climate so high with, uh, you know, mental illness and, and, and suicide rate through the roof? And, and and with the people who they appear to have it all. I know. I know. Yeah. You got to go back and check that relationship. Mm-hmm. If you're in a crowd, Jeannie, and someone says, Ma, I mean, you got a crowd of folk. But you know that Ma, you know that voice. And sure enough, it's your, it's your baby girl calling. You'll, you'll turn around because you know that voice, Right. Isn't it the same when we have these callings in and on our lives for getting out and becoming what we were supposed to become? Isn't it the same as Everett said, that passion Mm -hmm. and every one of his businesses, whether they were in technology or what have you, they always served people. I tell my baby, when you're in the, 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 when you have the, the, the realm Get in the business, get in the business that God's in. He's in the people business. Think about it. Get in the people business. Answer the question for your generation. You won't worry about money again. (laughs) You really will not. Answer the question. But it it sounds easy. It's not. Right. Because the biggest fight, the biggest enemy you'll ever have is you. Amen. I'm done. <laughs> That's the biggest enemy. <laughs> and this, this is, I mean, oh. I like, man. Uh, and this, this here is a Dr. Tanya showing just in case. <laughs> and you, you wonder what you get. I mean, th- this to me yes. is more impactful yeah. than any, you know, taking a course. It's real tangible things Absolutely. to get you from where you are to where Absolutely. you want to be. And, uh, again, thank you for this platform. Yeah. And I know yeah. that this show, like the rest of your shows, but like, again, sometimes like today, yeah. so many people are going to play this. I can't tell you how many people told me this particular show. It's just like any piece of information. So right. I played it. I listened right. two and three times. Yeah. My neighbor stopped This is me. another one. This is a hit. <laughs> this is one of these platinum really? hits. Yeah, I just want to let you know. My neighbor stopped me the other day, and I love, love, love looking at her. And I hope you're listening, baby. She says, hey, I listened to your show. And she, she's trying to show me the phone. And she asks her daughter, hey, where's my phone? I took notes. See, Dr. Tanji, I took notes. Wow. And I'm thinking, and she has no earthly idea. Five minutes ago, I was on my face. She has no earthly idea where I'm, I'm sitting there saying, God, I thank you for the listeners. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for the likes. But more importantly, it's the message. If you can live a better life from the inside out, and you're, yeah, yeah, we have things that go on in life. Absolutely. We all do. But when you know what you know, that you know that you know, and everything you win, come on, man, don't you want that kind of life? I like that. Let's that kind of life. That kind of life. Living that kind of yeah, life. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That oh, Dr. Tanji oh, life. Oh, you know me. You, you, oh you know boy. me. Be careful. Be careful. Because <laughs> you you'll end not. up having, <laughs> that'll be another brand that has a go under your company. So <laughs> if you don't want it to happen, don't say it to someone. Don't that, tell me because I'll that, make you do it. That have, that pushes vision. See, I, I tell her all the time, you, you are a birther. If you, if you get pregnant with an idea, you always want someone that says, you know what? We got this. Yeah, let's move this and let's move that and let's do this. Yep, yep, yep. You got to do this. And she takes you outside of your comfort zone. But at the end of the day, you're so much a better person than what you were before you met that person. So that's, that's life. And that is a good life. That is living the abundant life. And I appreciate each and every one of you. I really, really do. Let's live life on top. Yep. Let's live from the inside out. And abundantly. And abundantly. And stay interactive with Dr. Tanji while you're doing it. Um, All social media platforms at Dr. Tanji Show. And uh, any questions, comments, 
feedback and uh promise you we got more than a few surprises on your way okay i promise Good you deal. you you got my word okay w- w- watch where you see dr tanji come to you from <laughs> yes thanks again everyone have a wonderful day make this day count forget don't forget to smile you never know who really needs that have a good day. Plus, it just makes you feel good. Yeah, it does. Yeah. How about that? Bye. Bye. <laughs>